goes through and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily. I'm your host Julian Bonici. With me today I have Sam Vassallo. Um, today our episode is sponsored by Bulgari Malta. Bulgari is introducing the new aluminium luxury sports watch. Um, these watches are unisex and are made from aluminium and rubber. But most importantly of all, they are the perfect luxury gifts for your loved ones this Christmas. I'm sure everyone's doing a, last, a lot of last minute shop, um, Christmas shopping this year. So be sure to get your hands on one. Um, today, our headlines are as, follow, are as follows. Rosian Kutayar pocketed 46,500 euro for brokering Jorgen Fenech's attempted purchase of an Emdina home. Um, one Togolese asylum seeker makes his business dreams come true. Um, Malta's former president comes out swinging against an army flyover. Um, crucial HIV medicine arrives in Malta and Malta imposes mandatory quarantine on all UK arrivals. Um, on to our first story, Junior Minister for Reforms, Roseanne Kutayer has landed herself in hot water after revelations that she pocketed €46,500 for an undeclared tax cash for brokering the sale of a luxurious 3.1 million Imdina home for Jorgen Fenech, the main suspect in the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia. Now, the promised sale itself was signed in May 2019 at Porto Marzo. This is well after Jorgen Fenech was revealed to be the owner of 17 Black. That is the Dubai-based company, long linked to alleged government corruption from the Panama Papers all the way to a, an NM Malta purchase of a Montenegro wind farm. Um, the, the property owners are now um, looking to recoup that €46,500 fee after the deal fell through because of Fenech's arrest in connection with the assassination. Quite interestingly, Kutayar and her and I guess her public statement on the issue did not actually deny that she took the 46,500 euro, but rather published a legal letter telling the property owners to take their issue up with third parties. Interestingly enough, guess who Rosian Kutayar's lawyer was? None other than Edward Gart, that's the same lawyer representing Keach Cambry in a myriad of criminal investigations, including, of course, the assassination itself. Um, now, Roseanne Kutayar, on her part, insists she acted in the correct manner, legally, ethically, and politically. Um, however, um, PN leader, has still PN leader Bernard Gregg has still called for her resignation. Um, on his part, the Prime Minister of Malta, Roberta Bella, has been completely silent on the issue. Now, to Kutayar herself, she actually said, you know, at the time I wasn't a member of the, of, of the cabinet. However, she was a sitting MP, she was employed within OPM, and rather crucially, she was one of the government's representatives within the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Now, dates are very important. In June 2019, just a month, a month after pocketing 46,500 euro, thanks to Fenech, Rosian Kutaya was in the Council of Europe fighting calls um, from the Council of Europe to initiate a public inquiry into the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia. That same resolution was a, was a detailed report that even named Fenech as the 17th black owner linked to government corruption. Make of that will you will, but her position is far too compromised and it's time she must step down. Sam, what do you think about it? I mean, it's a lot of people uh, don't believe that she acted ethically, um, ethically sound and politically sound either. There have been numerous calls for her removal or resignation. In fact, um, the opposition, including opposition leader Bernard Grech, even Roberto Metzola, have called for her immediate removal. I think, I think the most concerning thing of all is the fact that our Prime Minister has said nothing on, on this issue. You know, we don't even know half of, of, of what's actually going on. I mean, thank God for this public inquiry. You know, it just shows that just because there's a, a cabinet shakeup doesn't mean anything, frankly, if, if um, things like this come to light and not, no action is taken. I mean, after such shady deals, you know, we still have Justin Caruana, you know, her ex-husband is, is, is um, involved with Jürgen Fenech. We, have, we, don't, we still don't know the extent of Edward Zamit Lurie's relationship with Jürgen Fenech. And I'm just, I'm just, I just hope that the public inquiry can go on undeterred and can get more information to light. On to our next story. Something a bit lighter here. So one Togolese asylum seeker has made his business dreams in Malta come true. So Loving Malta sat down with Jacob Yokoabu, who is an asylum seeker who arrived in Malta by boat in 2007. He was very uh, talented with tech and that um, led to him opening a store on Hamroon's High Street. So he arrived in 2007 in Malta. 
he became known in the um, open center of Halfa as you know the technician he was repairing the odd you know TV over here even soldiers were using his services eventually he got a loan with an NGO called Malta Microfinance which gives uh, small loans to vulnerable groups who otherwise don't have access to traditional banking now he has his own store I think what's you know fantastic story I think what's interesting though is after you ask him, you know, what is the next step to this? His avenues are quite limited because he doesn't have citizenship, meaning that he can't open, you know, a proper bank account, he can't buy a home, he can't essentially put his roots here, even though he's been here for more than a decade. And I believe this could address, be addressed in this new um, anti-racism action plan that they're being proposed. Yes, um, I think also what the show story shows is the merits of, um, you know, a proper integration um, policy in, in the country. You know, it shows that sometimes maybe some asylum seekers, some, some refugees, all they really do need is the, is the tools to become uh, a contributing member um, of society. I mean, it's a, it's a resource right in the country, you know, that, that could benefit everyone. Um, hopefully the government listens up and actually starts acting to give people like, like Jacob, I'm sure there are many other asylum seekers like Jacob in the country, a little push they deserve to actually start um, contributing in Malta. Um, on to our next story, Malta's former president and former prime minister have come out swinging against a proposed army flyover. Um, yeah, um, yesterday and today, um, former President Marie-Louise Colero Preca and former Prime Minister and current M M MEP Alfred Sant um, both wrote um, statuses um, coming, out, coming out against the project, which is a flyover linking army to Imrihel that's set to eat up about 22 million of agricultural land. It's the last green lung in the area. And it actually could also have an effect on a historical um, area, a historical tower within within the within the zone. Now, obviously, both of them um, said, you know, obviously, you know, infrastructure Malta, you know, this is the last green lung. We need to protect it for for the health and safety of the residents. But they also note that, worryingly enough, the plans were only revealed to the public during a protest by farmers in the area. Um, I don't know about you, but this is becoming too much of a pattern. Infrastructure Malta just plowing through any process, any public opinion to get to get things done, as, as the minister would, would like to put it. I mean, I get that there has to be progress, but whatever happened to the concern over the little guy, over the people who are going to be actually affected about these things? No communication, no nothing, just left in the dark as per usual. I don't know what you think about it, Sam. Exactly. I think our former president, Mary louis Colero Preca, um, summed it up uh, you know, eloquently. It is a rape of invaluable national land. I don't, I don't understand the point of you know, putting tarmac all over Malta, destroying our trees, and then saying we're putting up these vertical gardens and saying that you know, now we're taking care of the environment, we have a whole ministry dedicated to climate change, so on and so forth. To me, it's absolutely redundant if this is the, our attitude to one of the last green lungs and also destroying the livelihoods of more farmers. On to our next story. Critical, crucial HIV medicine has finally arrived in Malta. So, the Ministry of Health has confirmed exclusively to Loving Malta that HIV medicine has officially arrived, effectively putting an end to the national shortage. Now, just to jog your memories a little bit, some HIV patients recently reached out to Loving Malta, super concerned because um, essentially the, the HIV treatment abruptly uh, dried up in Malta, meaning that they had to resort to crowdfunding and, and using the medicine of other patients absolutely deplorable. Now, the ministry has said that, that this shortage um, is due to Brexit because um, of, you know, the UK is now stockpiling medicines because, because of, um, of their withdrawal from the EU um, uh, in January. They also said that there was a possible EU-wide shortage. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, as usual, sexual health kind of took the back burner because of the pandemic. Now, the EU Commission, speaking to Loving Malta, said that there was not, in fact, an EU-wide shortage and that um, there's a certain level of preparedness that is needed when dealing with Brexit because, you know, this Brexit isn't, didn't come out of nowhere. We've been in negotiations for, for the past uh, four years. I don't know what you think about um, this. Yeah, no, I, I mean, obviously very worrying. I mean, very positive news, I'm sure, for, for the HIV patients that that's finally arrived, but also very worrying that they were disregarded in such a long, in such a way for, for quite, a few, quite a few weeks. Unfortunately, I think what it speaks to is, I mean, I guess, the country's, I mean, lack of, you know, attitude, whatever, to, to actually address the sexual health issues in the country. You know, we're still waiting um, on a policy and the GU clinic itself also remains um, worryingly understaffed. Um, to give 
health authorities at least some benefit of the doubt. You know, it is, it, it is you know the year of a pandemic of COVID nineteen, and most of their resources have been directed towards that, and also their energy has been directed to, towards that. Still, it should not excuse leaving HIV patients completely uncertain about their futures over what is essentially a life saving medicine. You know, it. I could only imagine what it must be like to a patient, and I really hope that, I mean, once this pandemic is, is well and truly over, that the, the health ministry devotes all its resources to sexual health into the, in the country. Um, on COVID-19, that brings us to our final story. Um, Malta will impose a mandatory quarantine on, quarantine on all UK arrivals as of 22nd December. So just to make it clear, as of tomorrow, anyone arriving from the UK will be forced into mandatory quarantine of two weeks. If you break it, you'll be subject to quite an intense fine. Now, all of this started after news that a new COVID-19 variant has emerged in the UK. Um, just to make things clear, there have been other variants over the last few months. However, this is a bit different given its rate of transmission. I think it's transmissible about 70%. And um, the UK itself has closed um, um, large swathes of, of the south of the country um, out of fears of the virus because it's already starting to spread to parts of Europe, even as far as South Africa and Australia. Now, Malta actually took a different tact than, than most other European countries. Several countries like the Netherlands, France, Germany and Belgium closed all flights, all entry, um, whether it's by air, by sea or by, or by car. Um, you know, I don't know what you think about it. Let us know in the comments below. Should Malta have done the same? I, I, I'm pretty sure I read that that um, basically they're waiting for EU directives to see how to, how to pursue this further. Exactly. Speaking of uh, COVID-19, just to give you the latest uh, update, there have been unfortunately three more deaths yesterday, meaning uh, the total COVID-19 death toll in Malta is up to 190. There are currently 1,553 active cases after 53 more patients were discovered yesterday and 101 recoveries. This is your reminder to keep vigilant uh, in the festive season. I know that this is the time for family, but let's keep them truly in mind and stay safe. Be sure to, to, uh, to book a regular swab test and stay safe. Yeah, you know, regular testing might actually, you know, at least allow you to, to, to pick up anything, you know, um, as quickly as possible. And um, that's all for us for today. Just a reminder that today our, our episode is sponsored by Bulgari Malta. Bulgari Malta is introducing the new aluminium luxury sports watch. These watches are unisex and are made from aluminium and rubber. But as I said earlier, most importantly of all, they are the perfect luxury gift for your loved ones this Christmas. Here's a video all about it. Um, and that's um, from it for, for us today. Thanks a real lot for joining. But before you go, make sure you go check out um, The First Vice. It's Love and Malta's exclusive intimate documentary of Roberta Metzola on her way to becoming the first vice president of the European Parliament. You can check that out on Love and Malta's Facebook page. But here's a little trailer. And um, that's all from to us. And have a day full of loving. Mela, let me get into the table. Boys, it's, it's dinner time. Come, Aya. Yeah. I want to get out of this idea that Malta is small. I know, I'm not mascara. I'm not going to pay it. I didn't think that I would have been at any point addressing your group for the position of vice president. When you come to this parliament, you have a choice. It's about leaving your mark. It's not fun. 24 hours is too much at a comfort night. It gives us a voice that is louder than, than our country has had before. This has been my comfort food. I mean to consider you milk zero or call my colleagues on the celebrate a haja out. Ho ricevuto la candidatura dell'onorevole Mezzola proposta dal gruppo Poppare. I was ready to do it, right? Um, because I felt that it was my responsibility also to do it.